Health is a word that ties into a wide variety of different concepts. Physical and mental well-being, sporting activities, medicines, and remedies are all related to health as an overall topic. This edition of the journal is going to cover five stories that revolve around the theme of personal health. Hello, my name is Jared Velke, and welcome to this week's edition of The Journal. Hi, my name is Jenna Bennett. Today we'll be looking at five stories surrounding personal health and well-being. Regular exercise is a hugely important aspect of personal health. One way of getting that often neglected physical activity is through sports such as soccer, football, and one of today's topics, rugby. Rugby originated in England, where there are records of leagues going back as far as 1830. Rugby is enjoyed all over the world with especially huge levels of popularity in France, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. Today's story looks at the young experiences of a rugby enthusiast. Let's take a look. My name's Christina Branch. I'm playing for the Rugby Ontario Junior Storm Sevens team. I've been playing rugby for about four years now and I started in grade nine and I've been playing ever since. Some of the people at my school told me to play so if they were playing I kind of want to play too and at first I didn't want to play because I'm like no I'm not going to play that because it looks scary but then I got into it and it got fun. My name is Ian Fitzgerald and I'm the under 18 Ontario Storm Sevens coach. I've been coaching Christina since uh, mid-October. We started our tryouts for the Ontario team um, in late October and selected the squad early November and from there on she's been a part of our starting 12 players that we take to tournament teams. So basically it's kind of like football except instead of passing the ball forwards you have to pass the ball backwards and if you drop it forward it's called the knock-on and it's kind of like the same like the same rules as football. You try to get into the other person's end zone. Christina's most valuable asset is her speed. We were right away recognizing the fact that Christina was the leading try scorer for Ontario in the summertime. I got a news article written about me in the Oshawa This Week paper. That was kind of scary. I was kind of shy because it was the first time as something like that big has ever happened. When I played on the Ontario team in the summer, we won second place. So I got a nice silver medal in the shape of a maple leaf. And then after my school teams, I got MVP for seven, so I have like a little plaque. And on my club team, we won provincial champs, so I have a little medal on, on that too. I like most being involved in the team is about meeting new people and like meeting the girls and stuff and then you become really close with them and you keep in contact with them even though you don't see them as often so they become like kind of like your second family. So our next tournament uh, is the Las Vegas Invitational Tournament. It's uh, the largest uh, amateur tournament in North America. Playing at away games are kind of fun too because you're like kind of a bit of less pressure because you're not you're not playing in front of people you know, so you don't feel the need to like be good or anything. I hope so. Hopefully if I don't break anything or if nothing bad happens to me, I hope so. That looked like a lot of fun. You know what? Kind of put me in the mood for rugby. Jenna, you want to have a game? I'm cool. Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. I was on the rugby team in high school. I made the most brutal tackles. Uh, and you know what? I have zero experience. Uh, so, you know, let's uh, do it next week. Does that sound good for you? Uh, all right. <clears throat> uh <-huh>. Chicken. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Well, in the meantime, we should get back to the show. Sounds good. Coming up, four more stories. The remaining topics include depression, Asperger's syndrome, a basketball coach, and one story about the use of medical marijuana. Our next story is something that affects many of us in one way or another. 8% of Canadian adults will experience major depression at some time in their lives. And many of us, not, and many of us are directly impacted by those we know who have it. We're going to take a look at a story surrounding one man's struggle with depression. As far as I can remember, I've had this problem for about five years, and it all started way back in high school. And I, I, I met this one girl who I'd been friend, who I was friends with for so long, and my heart just went out to her. And what happened was, is she ended up, you know, using me, leading me on, and that's when I felt emotions I'd, been, I'd never felt before. I never really understood what rejection was. I never understood what this what this utter sadness was. At first, I didn't really understand what was going on. I didn't understand why things were so difficult to enjoy. And then, and so I, I was looking up symptoms, and I did some online tests, and it said you may be experience, experiencing s symptoms of, yeah, I can't even say the word. But, and then I thought, okay, maybe I should start talking to the school guidance counselor. One of the ways this has really affected my life is my sleep schedule. Sometimes there's just this, this, overflowing insomnia that happens every now and then because it's because of, of memories and emotions and it just creates this, this 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 darkness that you just can't escape from and you cannot fall asleep you know i lie here for hours and hours tired out of my mind not being able to sleep so my outlets for for dealing with this problem are well one for drawing i love to draw it's the best way to get, to get out what's in my mind on onto paper but i love to make films you, you know, short films, uh, short series. I love to watch movies, play video games. And another one is I love to play my flight simulator. Um, I play this World War II flight simulator, and it's the most realistic simulator out there. And when I play it, I just forget everything in this world. I forget all that is wrong, and I just focus on flying the aircraft. And the real problem here is, is that everybody treats you like it's all in your head. When realistically it is, but they think you're putting on a show. They think, oh, we just get over it. Go get a job. Go make friends. It's really not easy at all. The thing about suicide is it's, it's, it's the easy way out. And I had two options. I can either struggle and go and get help and go through this long recovery process or take the easy way out. But the problem with the easy way out is, is you take all the stress that you're feeling Put it on other people. A little bit, but that's kind of whittling away now. So wait, it's, that wasn't a big one. No, I, I think my my anxiety was caused by by the people around me, and also find myself find myself very fatigued again lately. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, my doctor really really helped me understand that it's a chemical imbalance. Your brain balances out all of your emotions, but when there's an imbalance the feelings of joy and happiness kind of just escape and they don't they don't they don't register so you're kind of stuck with with this sadness and before i thought you know well, what's wrong with me but now that i've done research and i've been told by a, like my doctor and a few friends that it's a chemical imbalance it's not it's not something wrong with 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 you we uh, people with this problem we we don't wake up and decide to feel like this if, if, if we could just snap out of it, we would. The, the problem is people always say, oh, you're fine, snap out of it. It's all in your head. Yes, it is all in our head. And that's the worst part, is you, you can't see what's going on in our minds. If, if I have a broken arm, you can see that it's broken. If you have a broken mind, you can't see it. even a school guidance counselor because it's a great way to, to connect with people who don't understand what's going on inside their heads and if 
fine if I can do that. Then maybe my life would, would account for something. Sam, who was just featured in this piece, has graciously agreed to come onto our show today to speak with us. How are you doing, Sam? Good, thanks for having me. So, how did it feel to finally open up publicly about your condition? I have to say, at first it was really weird, because normally when you have the, these conditions, you don't get a lot of attention, and when you do get the attention, it's very negative. So it's good to finally get the recognition for this. Um, I know that you have shared this piece with a lot of your close friends. Um, do you feel that it accurately reflects, you know, what your daily life is like? It, it, it's really hard to comprehend and and and, and, and understand what this is is what this condition can do to a person. But I find this video, you know, it comes as closely as as it can to really showing what it's like to live in this darkness. How did it feel for you to recreate those moments um, and just, I guess, you know, you had to kind of refresh your memory in a lot of those dark times. How did that feel to do in front of the camera? It, it was a little bit of a trigger because, you know, uh, you know trying to re recreate those moments that happen all the time is, is, is a bit hard on my mind because, you know, it's, it's, it's a part of my life I don't really want to remember, but it's always mm -hmm. going to be there. So let's say we went back two years ago, you know, when things were harder for you and you knew less about your condition. Do you think you would have been willing to do this short film or talk about it publicly? Two years ago, I probably would not have said a word to anybody, and because and and I I, I didn't I didn't either because two years ago I had no idea what was going on. I wasn't yet officially diagnosed, so I'm just sitting there, you know, wondering what is wrong with me. Why is everybody pushing me away? Why am I always upset? And then finally went to a doctor, got diagnosed. So now I now I understand. I can be more open about it. Mm -hmm. And do you think what you're doing here, however hard it is, is helping? You know other people that have this problem, like it's bringing more light onto this topic. Mm -hmm. I, 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 re I really think it is, you know, because uh, anybody who's, who's out there who has this problem, they have to understand that they are not alone. There are people that even though they, they try their, their, their best to understand, they want to be there to help you and they want to be there to save you from yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so we see in the film uh, several um, short sequences of how you deal with things, you know, like your hobbies. Do you want to talk a little more about that? Yeah. Again, for one, drawing, filmmaking, and playing my flight simulators are all a great way to basically distract my mind f from from over overthinking, over analyzing, and just focus on one thing, which helps me keep my life on track. Talking about the flight simulator, um, do you want to? Well, actually, sorry, that's all we have for today. So, thank you for speaking with us, Sam. No problem. Thanks, Jared. That was a great interview. It's really great to be able to take another look at such a compelling story. Speaking of compelling stories, our next story today is an uplifting piece about a brave young lady who has Asperger's syndrome. Asperger's syndrome was named after pediatrician Hans Asperger, who first began studying children with symptoms typical of the syndrome in 1944. Well, let's take a look. to emerge the first time. We had no idea what was going on, um, why she was, she was hallucinating. She was in a panic like you've never seen a child panic. I'm Beatrix Switzer. I'm 16 years old. I live in Uxbridge. <laughs> we had a lot of different things growing up. My parents enjoyed traveling, which I enjoy traveling, but you don't want to travel with me. <laughs> I've done cheerleading since I was eight. We started traveling with cheer. That was a complete mess being on a bus for six hours. I was panicking and freaking out. So my mom knew I had at least some anxiety. <laughs> But something. <laughs> we just didn't know what. We can't find the tail. Where could it be? We met our current doctor. He said that I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety. So I was going through a lot of therapy and pro 
programs, like worry busters <laughs> and stuff. But we realized none of that was <laughs> really working because I was told I was really stubborn and that they couldn't help me. I hate you all! My doctor started, as he started spending more and more time with me in his office, uh, he thought he saw signs that I could be on the autistic scale. And finally, I got the <laughs> diagnosis of Asperger's. anxiety around anything. I'll like casually just like itch my head or my neck or rub my legs and I won't even notice <laughs> I'm doing these things. That's why we have Stanley. He's trained to take my attention away from I guess all my emotions are like super intense. It's like when I'm excited I am very excited. You can hear it in my voice. I am bouncing off the walls. <laughs> um, like, I don't even know how to describe this. Sorry, I'm like... I attend Windreach Farms for therapy horseback guiding. <laughs> Spending time with a horse, it's called animal therapy, and like, because it calms you and relaxes you, and you learn how to take care of another being as opposed to just yourself. So we have to like brush them and we have to take care of them, and then we get to ride them for a bit, and we gotta take them back out, and we gotta feed them, pick up their poop and everything. Us learning more about Asperger's. Uh, I think she's starting to come along, but uh, it feels like we still have a long way to go. That was a very inspiring story. Glad we were able to have a look. If you'd like more information about Asperger's, please visit www.asperger's.ca. Coming up next is a, is a look at a topic that has given rise to its fair share of controversy, Medical marijuana. Marijuana is currently considered to be an illegal sub substance in Canada. However, in special circumstances, doctors are able to write a prescription for medical marijuana. Some of the common uses of medical marijuana include reducing and controlling chronic pain, seizures, and muscle spasms. That's true. However, with controversy and rapidly changing political opinions, it's hard for medical marijuana users to rest easy. For a closer look, let's watch a story about a strong supporter of medical marijuana and her business. I got into a car accident in 2005 um, to a trip of my neck and pelvis and wrist and, and a bunch of other things. It was very catastrophic. I was invincible at that point in my life. Um, nothing could stop me. And then a car did. You know, a lot of people are embarrassed because I'm not embarrassed of it. I was hooked on painkillers. I didn't even realize I was hooked on painkillers until a loved one had told me. I started doing lots of research on um, alternatives to pain. Sorry about those technical difficulties. We'll be back in just a moment.
pelvis and wrist and, and a bunch of other things. It was very catastrophic. I was invincible at that point in my life. Um, nothing could stop me. And then a car did. After that car accident, I got hooked on painkillers, which, you know, a lot of people are embarrassed because I'm not embarrassed. But, but I was hooked on painkillers. I didn't even realize I was hooked on painkillers until a loved one had told me. I started doing lots of research on um, alternatives to painkillers, which sounds weird. What's an alternative to a painkiller? Cannabis, as it turns out. Uh, when I was on pharmaceuticals, I was a zombie. I was not me. I didn't like having conversations with people. I didn't really want to make eye contact. I didn't want to get up. I just kind of wanted to sit there and sit. You know, it didn't matter if there was something on TV. I could stare beside it and be like, well, I've been changed. Now I use cannabis. Uh, I vaporize it. I wear it topically on my wrist as cream. I also smoke and ingest cannabis. I use cannabis um, in its fullest that I can. I really believe in this plant. Um, now I don't have these issues. I mean, my wrist hurts, but uh, I control it with cannabis. It's not the same hurt. I do not feel using medical marijuana as anything negative effect on my life. Um, I've done nothing but receive positive effects from it. I, I mean, people may view it as negative, um, but I'm not really concerned with other people's views. And the people that do view it as negative, I'm generally trying to change them. I mean, that's stigma for you. I wanted to open up my own dispensary for a while, and the reason for it was I was not okay with the prices other dispensaries were charging. I know the price of the medicine. I know what it comes in as, and I know what it Feel it should go out as. Um, I find that a lot of dispensaries charge insanely high amounts of, for medicine, and most people using this medicine are on a fixed income. So the reason I really wanted to open a dispensary was so that I could set the prices the way I want them and make sure that people who needed medicine could get medicine. I hated seeing people turned away because they didn't have enough money. I mean, a lot of these people have PTSD. A lot, some of them are on the streets. I, mean, I, I just, I care about people, so um, I really wanted to do things my way. It's not a control thing, it's it's a humanity thing. I gotta, I gotta get you. What size are you? Uh, about a medium. About a medium. I, uh, I used cannabis previously, um, at, recreationally, definitely recreationally. I didn't see a medicinal benefit in cannabis, you know, I thought it was kind of a joke. And uh, research and research kept telling me that what I thought was a joke was actually accurate. So I started using cannabis to get off painkillers cold turkey, started using cannabis, and my life is freaking out. Medical marijuana has been a bit of a hot topic in the news lately. Liberal Party leader Justin Trudeau wishes to end the prohibition on marijuana. And with the next federal election occurring in October, I'm sure we'll hear plenty more about the Liberal Party's stance on the subject in the months to come. Only time will tell what will happen. For now, let's get to our final story. We've gone through a lot of really interesting information today, but it's been a lot to take in. Once this show's finished, I can't wait to just sit back and relax. But there's no time for that yet. We're going to have one more high energy story. We're going to take a look at a story about Kirk Miller, a man who coaches children's basketball. That seems like a good story to close out the day. With all of the attention basketball receives in the United States, it's easy to forget that it was invented by a Canadian, Dr. James Naismith, in 1891. Let's take a look at today's final story. Chris Bosch. Kevin Durant. Kobe Bryant. Kyrie Irving. LeBron James. So I found out there was a guy that ran a program called Raptor Ball, and I went to volunteer. But I used to volunteer so much, and he wasn't around, so I used to basically take over the class. And uh, I did it so often that they asked me uh, to start full time, and I've been doing it ever since. Wow. This is still the same program. Just having confidence, never doubting yourself, um, you know, sharing. Communicating. Just having fun. That's the main thing. It's just having fun. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. No one's getting a trophy. No one's getting medals. Everyone's just having fun. And if you can incorporate even some cardio in there, even better. Thank you.
They get to meet new people, so their communication skills increases, um, their confidence increases, and um, just their overall just attention span. And the way I run the program is very detailed, so they have to pay attention, so that increases in total everything. And hopefully, once they are learning those drills, they use those same skills into the game. So the whole point is to teach them what they're going to do in the game. with his confidence. He's made a lot of friends and his abilities in the actual game itself have improved immensely. This is his second time coming back into it, but he's done amazing and he's a more confident person and he's more outgoing. So it's changed him a lot. Kids can use this as a platform to take it to the next level. Um, it's just a, you know, it's a teaching point. Even if you're not that serious about basketball, you can still just have fun. <laughs> do drills and it's fun, everyone gets to play, they be active. It's really fun for kids that love to play basketball out in the area. Well, that was our fifth story, meaning that's everything for today. We had the opportunity to look at rugby, depression, Asperger's, medical marijuana, and basketball coaching. Seems like we had a big day today, Jenna. We sure did, Jared. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I'm Jenna Bennett, signing off. I'm Jared Velke. Have a great week. Thanks for tuning into The Journal. We'll see you next week.